Using the new corrections concept in Capture 2025, it's possible to correct or fine-tune the response to zoom parameters in Capture. This lets you create a more realistic and accurate visualization. In order to do that, you need to have some equipment in place. You need to have a lighting console to control your lights. You need to have a computer running Capture that is also receiving DMX from the console. You need to have the light or the lights that you are going to be working on. And you need to have a camera connected to the laptop. In this case, I'm going to be using an Elgato web camera. But of course, any kind of camera supported by your computer works fine. Once you have this equipment in place, you need to take a couple of measurements. First off, you need to measure the distance from the lens of the fixture to the wall that you will be projecting at. You want the fixture to be at a perpendicular angle from the wall and, of course, to be shooting uh, a level beam. You also want to measure the diameter of the lens of the fixture. Some fixtures have a very small lens, some fixtures have a bigger lens. A uh, neat trick to make this easier is to place a piece of paper in front of the lens when the fixture is not at maximum intensity and measuring on top of that paper. Finally, you are also going to need to measure the diameter of the footprint of the beam uh, as it hits the wall. It's advisable to use as large a room as possible as smaller rooms introduce um, optical errors that make this process slightly less exact. Nevertheless, you can have really big gains using this process, even if parts of it are done at lower accuracy. When your setup is ready, it's time to start working in Capture. The first thing you need to do is make sure you have a project file with the fixtures you will be working on already in the project. In this case, it's a DTS Max and a Mac Viper XIP and we're going to be working with a Mac Viper XIP. Select it and scroll down to the correction property of the Viper. Double click it and select edit. This creates a new blank correction for the Viper XIP. So the next thing to do will be to scroll down to the zoom response property of the correction and double click on that and select edit. This opens the correction window where we will be doing all the work. As you can see, it shows you the camera feed. Uh, it's also possible to change camera using the drop down at the top of the view. And on the right hand side, we have the controls that we'll be working on, starting with the setup section. Here we need to make sure that we have the DMX settings for the fixture in question properly set up. This includes which universe to get the DMX from, which DMX mode the fixture is in, as well as the DMX channel that the fixture is patched to. After that, you're ready to start inputting some numbers, starting with the distance from the lens to the wall that you measured before. In this case, um, it's 2.63 meters. Next, you enter the aperture width or the lens diameter of the fixture as measured before, 14 centimeters. After this, you want to adjust the reference size until the yellow circle matches the beam's footprint on the wall. It's during this process that you will want to try to align the camera as well as possible possibly also adjusting the pan or tilt parameters of the fixture to make it easier to better match the yellow reference circle with the actual footprint of the fixture. When you're fairly happy with that, you need to take a measurement of the beam footprint on the wall. I thank my alter ego for helping me out with this. And it turns out it's 117 centimeters. 
At this point, we check the lock checkbox, which enable us to start working with the actual corrections. What we need to do here is step through the zoom parameter in increments of or decrements of 10%, starting anywhere we like actually. But in this example, we're going to be starting from the widest angle going down to the most narrow. And at each step, we need to adjust the beam size slider until the white circle matches the footprint we see on the wall. As the footprint increases or decreases, you will notice that the intensity of the beam interacts with the exposure of the camera. So you are likely going to have to be adjusting the intensity of the fixture continuously as you are doing this, as otherwise you will white out or black out the, the camera feed. It's also very helpful to pre-record a number of focus beam or whatever your console calls it, palettes, so that you can easily step through these in effect 11 different palettes. So you will have palette for 0%, 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100%. So then you step through all these, uh, suggest going from the widest all the way down. Now you may notice when you get down to the smaller angles that you will find it difficult or even impossible to match the white circle, the beam size with the actual footprint. This will typically happen if the room isn't in fact large enough for the properties of your fixture. Um, so the most sensitive setup would be a very small angle fixture with a large lens. Um, this tends to create the largest challenges with this procedure. Of course, if you are able to use, let's say, at least a 10 meter distance to the wall, you will be much better off, but it also makes it harder to take measurements of the footprint, for instance. So once you have stepped through all these 11 different parameter positions, uh, and here it is important to hit the exact 10% increments because the slider for adjustment is only enabled at those exact increments. But when you've gone through all of that, you're now able to freely adjust the zoom parameter of the fixture and you will notice that capture will now follow that in a much, much better manner than it did before. And once you've done this, of course, don't forget also to right click on that correction, export it to a file and sending it to our library department so that we can incorporate it into the library for all users.